Hello everyone, Genesis Writer here with another in-depth theater mode film analysis of a Big Team Slayer game I got on the map Port Authority while playing the Big Team Battle playlist in Halo 5. During this game we faced a pretty decent enemy team. Uh, many of these players, I believe six of the enemy team players, were from a Spartan company called Wonder. And they actually specifically state that Big Team Battle is one of the playlists that they play in the bio for their company. I'll probably briefly put that up on your screen here. So this was a really good game. We had eight EXO members on our side. They did have two randoms, just to be clear. Um, this is not at all, in any way, shape, form, a put down on O on Wonder. Uh, they're a really good group, and that's why this game and uh, film were worth going over on my end. And that's why I was just surprised at how well I performed during the game. I thought it would be a great gameplay example to go over. Uh, I end up getting a rampage, uh, 20 kills in a row without dying. Um, I do have a few deaths, but I thought I played this map pretty darn well. Uh, Port Authority, this map, you're only going to see it played uh, with the Slayer game type, so there's no objective on this map. So the map requires a kind of patient, methodical way of playing it, and I'm just going to commentate through the gameplay like I would um, and show you what I was thinking and what I'm trying to do during the game and give you an in-depth uh, look at how I perform so well during this game. Now, one thing to know is that this is Halo 5 Guardians Theater mode, and what that means is, yes, I have these tools where I can pull in the third person, but you're going to probably see some really, really laggy shots. Uh, some shots that I fire are not even going to be on the enemy player when I kill them. That is Halo 5 Guardians Theater mode. That is not how it appeared during the live actual gameplay on my screen. So just keep that in mind. Um, I do have to keep my name up on the bottom center of your screen. That's required because sometimes the film will just randomly switch player POVs. I don't know why. So uh, to start off this game, what I'm going to be trying to do here is I'm going to be trying to bait the grenade launcher on the right. So uh, oftentimes what you'll see here is that the enemy players will all rush up this tunnel and they will you know, grab the plaza pistol, which spawns right here, and they'll go for the grenade launcher. But what you can do oftentimes is you can use uh, your ghost and you can use your players to kind of bait the players into the tunnel using your grenades, weaken them, back them down. This is a really hard spot to get out of once you have the nade launcher, unless you actually push into this tunnel. So if you, if you have a teammate waiting for them in this tunnel, that's a really good idea. But the enemy players have uh, other plans as we don't get to the ghost quite on time like we needed to. And an enemy player pops into this window uh, and I believe uh, goes through this window right here, uh, jumps up along this area and pops into this window very, very quickly and is able to take me out here. That's a very good play on the enemy team. I do get a grenade off here. But what I really needed to do is as soon as I saw that my nade hit this player, is I needed to push forward into this tunnel. Now, I probably would have still been shot once or twice by this player. You can see he's up there very, very, very quickly. I may not have even been able to make it to the tunnel, but I needed to either you know, be closer to these to get behind these to stay alive, or I needed to push aggressively into the tunnel and make the play that I'm trying to make here and not just kind of stagnate out in the middle of nowhere. As it is, this guy's gonna be able to easily clean me up from the left here from this window. Uh, my teammate in the ghost uh, really does not need to push into this tunnel. I'm not quite sure why he does. Uh, we know that the enemy players uh, have a plaza pistol. They're going to have a plaza pistol if they're down this tunnel. Even though we escaped with a grenade launcher, it's not a good idea to try to push your ghost into this area. Um, I just choose to not focus on that. But it's, just, it's just not a very good play. I just wanted to point it out. I'm not trying to harp on any specific players. So I'm going to go ahead and switch back to my POV. I'll try to keep the gameplay actually more focused on my gameplay during the film because I don't mean to harp on players here. So off the start here, uh, once our uh, push towards grenade launcher doesn't really work out, um, I'm going to go ahead and grab the shotgun, which only has one clip of ammunition. That's five shotgun shells. And uh, I'm going to pu push down here and look at these guys who are trying to push to sniper spawn on the map. And you can see that sniper is down on the actual pad. And I'm going to get some really good shots off on these players who are trying to push into sniper spawn. Now, it's important that I pause here and point out the main spawns on the map so that you're generally aware of what we are trying to push for. This is a main spawn 
right here in this garage. Occasionally, you'll see players spawn on the docks here, but not as much. I'd say this is a high frequency spawn. Yeah, but the uh, by far the biggest frequency spawn is up in blue. Uh, in this back area as you can see one of the players just spawned behind us even though we just pushed out of this area uh, because we're all over on snipe side and we did, did just get a few kills some of these players spawn behind us in blue that's just halo 5 spawning system and how that works um, typically you're not going to see people spawn in the buildings almost at all or in the grenade launcher tunnel very much at all so just keep that in mind um, occasionally if you are on snipe then your teammates will spawn on snipe, vice versa for the enemy team. If the enemy team is on this snipe area and these back rocks, sometimes they'll respawn there on their teammates. But those are the main spawns you should be looking out for. And I'm very aware of that. As I push up here um, and notice that my teammates are maybe gonna die here, I push up, look for the back spawn, there it is. And that player tried to push up uh, from behind me right there. So knowing that the enemy team is likely going to spawn behind us here as we push up. I know I have to very aggressively kind of hold this building area. You can see that three players have already spawned behind us, and I'm very aware of that as I am choosing to hold this building. Um, I kind of rashly push out here a little bit and put shots on one of the enemy players. My teammate ends up cleaning him up, but these two players... Uh, right on my radar here uh, out in front of me. They both notice that I'm here, and so I have to quickly eject out of the situation. They ping me with a grenade, and I'm able to easily, uh, or not easily, but narrowly dodge the second grenade. Um, this little window here, I'm going to point this out very briefly, is great for kind of looking out and seeing where everyone is. You're not going to see me glance out there too much, but it's a great place to kind of get an eye for what's happening on the battlefield. My main goal right here, and just in general during this entire game is to stay alive. There is almost no reason to push out and try to force the enemy team when there are so many buildings, so many covers that you can use. Unless you're pushing with your team, which you'll see me do later in the film, and I'll show you specific examples of that, if you have an SMG or a shotgun, or if you're in these center buildings, you need to play your life. You need to be very, very passive and methodical with the way you play the game. By the way, that's what we, leads me to getting 20 kills in a row here without dying. Just to point that out. So you can see my teammates respawn behind these players who pushed up behind me. Those enemy players are now dead because they didn't push i guess because they didn't push up fast enough or they did push up fast enough and they rotated out here uh to this side of the map just guys please keep this in mind how brutal the spawns are on this map if you're spawning in these back blue base area you really want to get the heck out of there if at all possible because chances are the enemy players are going to spawn behind you just keep aware of where your teammates are and where you are on the map it's very important so right here i'm trying to te keep my teammates alive i know that the enemy player is going to be pushing my two teammates over here on snipe so i'm going to try to lay down fire on these enemy players pushing up on them i can see all my teammates died here and that's a signal for me to back up I glance to my right, notice that three of my teammates have respawned here, so I know my back spawn is okay. And I'm going to end up trying to protect my teammate who has a guy falling down on him through the center base. And eventually we end up cleaning up this guy. The theater mode is showing that my shots are super sloppy here. They were admittedly sloppy during the live gameplay, but not as sloppy as the theater mode film shows them to be here. So right here I instantly can tell that... Uh, <laughs> they have a sniper and this means that pretty much this push that we're about to make right here is probably going to fail unless i can peek out and try to get some good shots on enemy players i don't see enemy enemy players peeking out and i don't want my back spawn to be flanked so i peek out there get the perfect kill on a guy flanking right here i'm going to try to get some more B br ammo i didn't point that out that i'd actually shot so many players up here that i ran out of battle rifle ammo so i went over here to this guy who i just killed and i picked up his battle rifle that guy had an smg so if i had been peeking out that window for more than a few seconds this guy would have crept up on me with that smg and would have almost assuredly gotten the kill if i had not been fast on my feet with the shotgun now i see that my teammate is pushing out across the bridge so i'm admittedly i'm baiting my teammate here i'm letting my teammate push out take most of the fire and distraction while I push out and try to get some quick peek shots on some people. I see this guy uh, 
rashly pushes out. Uh, I'm not sure what that player uh, was thinking there. This player actually performs way better than that throughout the rest of the game. So I'm able to use my teammate as a distraction and get a perfect kill on that guy. My teammate calls out that he died below. And this is actually really, really lucky. Uh, this player almost got that charged EMP plasma pistol shot off on me. But it actually ends up hitting the railing. Which means that it only takes out my shield. And I'm able to clean him up. Uh, that was actually also a really good call by my teammate. Now I want you to notice here, I very, very briefly look out the window and see four enemy players here. I, you know, I look away from the window very, very quickly, but I, I noticed all those enemy players. I internalize that information and now I'm going to push it out into my gameplay and thought process as far as what, what play I'm going to try to make next in this film. I can see that the grenade launcher is coming up, but I don't know where exactly the enemy players are. So right now I'm just trying to get good shots on the enemy players over here, trying to keep them over at this uh, angle and let my teammates go ahead and push out over here. Because I know that four enemy players were on this snipe position, I want to make sure that they stay over there and don't, you know, they don't get any kills or anything and that my teammates can possibly push up here and get the grenade launcher. At least that was my thought process during this game. So right here, I'm just checking that I'm not getting spawned behind, that no players are pushing up. I checked and made sure my teammates are behind me, which we are. We have control of blue spawn. So I'm just you know going back there and checking that out. Uh, this player pushes up. We're able to melt him pretty easily. There's no reason for that player to push us here. We're going to have four BRs looking straight at him. That guy rashly pushes out, and I'm able to clean him up. Just to be fair, that was the enemy random player. That was not a wonder player that I just killed, and he ends up dying. Uh, he ends up going the most negative on the enemy team, just to be fair to wonder. So I can see that this guy is behind this rock over here, one shot, and my teammates are looking out. Uh, again, there's four players over there on that side, so I'm just trying to make sure that I don't get flanked. But for some reason, they seem to want to still aggressively push up on this side of the map, and I'm able to get a free grenade launcher as this guy tries to push in across this area and uh, grab the grenade launcher. Just as a warning to really anyone playing on this map, if you're controlling snipe side, there is almost zero reason to push into the, the bases because I can guarantee you that people will be crouching there waiting for you to do that. Um, so I'm able to get a free grenade launcher off of this guy. I get good shots off on this guy and then I'm able to clean him up with a secondary grenade launcher shot. I have two grenade launcher shots left. Now, my thought process here uh, this is actually the worst play I end up making during this game, and I want to very clearly tell you guys why. Um, my thought process here was that I'm going to bait the gr bait the ghost. I'm going to call out to my teammates, hey, teammates, go for the ghost so that we can get this. Now, the ghost spawns, uh, I believe, a minute and a half after it's destroyed, so it's very important to keep times on that and know when it's coming up. So I'm ready to... Uh, you know, ready for my teammates to drop down and grab it. Unfortunately, my teammates don't. They're not able to respond fast enough due to the gun battles they're in. And uh, this one player does a great job of running in here and grabbing the ghost away from me. And unfortunately, the shot I'm about to fire off here, I don't hold the grenade launcher trigger down long enough so that the shot will EMP the ghost. I actually end up mistakenly firing a default grenade launcher shot. The default grenade launcher shot, while slightly more powerful, it doesn't EMP vehicles. In general, 90% of the time, you want to be holding down the trigger to get that EMP shot on the grenade launcher, also allowing you to release the trigger whenever you want during the grenade's trajectory so that it will blow up exactly where you want it to. This is a huge mistake on my part because the enemy team ends up getting away with a ghost and my teammate JC does a phenomenal job of tracking down the ghost and hijacking him shortly after this in the film, which I'm not able to show you guys. But this is a bad play on my part because, again, I fired the default grenade and he gets away. Uh, I was trying to chase him down here with a second grenade, but that doesn't end up working out. And I have only three... Uh, Shotgun shots left. I'm going to have to play really passive with this rope weapon combo that I have. This is very lucky as I push forward and get this kill. I'm able to trade for the BR that was just dropped here. They still have the sniper rifle here. Uh, now, you may be wondering, okay, why did I just peek out when my teammate just got sniped? It's because I didn't see a glint on this guy. 
and that means I know that he switched to his battle rifle. Uh, that's upstart. He's a very good player. I switched to his battle rifle, so I was able to get a few shots on him, but he backs me down. Definitely not going to get that kill, as he landed almost all his shots there on me. Uh, so right here, uh, I can see my teammates are pushing into red building, so hopefully able to get some control of that. I have two more shotgun shells remaining. I'm trying to watch my teammates flank here. Now you may be wondering, okay, why am I sitting here? Well, I'm assuming that it is a it is possible that my teammates are going to get flanked from this bottom doorway because my teammates pushed out here and my these players are going to try to push in because that's what the enemy players have been doing during you know the first start of this film. So I'm assuming, okay, I need to watch my teammates back. I need to play around my teammates here and make sure they stay alive. And sure enough, that's exactly what ends up happening. So I'm able to get some good shots off on this guy. My teammate ends up dying out there, but I'm able to trade out the kill. Uh, that guy pushes up while he's weak. I'm not quite sure why he made that play, but maybe he, maybe they called out that I was weak. I don't know. Um, so right here, the reason I push up, and this is something I said earlier that I was going to mention in the film, the reason I push up is because I call to my teammate, JC. I call, who's in the ghost right now, I call to him, hey, let's go ahead and push up with the ghost on this side, and let's go ahead and try to take over the snipe side. As you can see, my teammates immediately respond, respond here. You're going to see the ghost push up, and we're going to try to make a very aggressive play on the enemy snipe as we push up and try to take over this location. Um, without my teammate's support here, there's no way this push would have worked and I would have died. Upstart immediately challenges very aggressively here. And without my teammate's support, I likely would have died here, but we're able to clean him up. <laughs> the, theater mode, the theater mode film shows that I get a shot through the rock there. <laughs> that's, that's typical theater mode for you. That's not how it looked during the live gameplay. Um, none of us were lagging. Upstart wasn't lagging. None of them were lagging that I could tell. Um, so we're able to get a successful push as I get the running riot on the snipe side of the map. And we're able to push these players off using the ghost. This is a great push on our part. One of the best pushes that we make. And uh, I'm thinking about trading my shotgun for the carbine there. But there's really no reason to. So I'm going to hold on to those last two shells of the shotgun. Now, we end up cleaning up these guys along this back docks area, and I was constantly calling out to my teammates, guys, we still have a guy on the on the dock boxes. He's still alive over here. We need to push through and clean him up. Thankfully, my team and my one of my teammates ended up spawning over here in this main spawn that I talked about, and he ended up being able to flank and clean this guy up. It's very important that you have this area cleared out and that your sniper occasionally checks that area. You can oftentimes get spawn kills due to the fact that this tower blocks the line of sight with uh, this garage area so your sniper can peek out and, and get spawn kills often in that area. Just be aware of that. So right here, one of the main pushes that the enemy team will try to make is that they will try to push up along this side because that's a main spawn. Like I said, they'll try to push up along this side and try to push into the snipe side. Uh, just like I did literally like 20 seconds ago in the film. So keep that in mind. That's one of the main angles that I'm going to be watching. We've reached about the halfway point. You can see it's a very intense game tied 51 to 50. We've been trading the lead throughout this entire time. So right here, I'm pushing up because I see that my teammate's trying to push out in the ghost, but I end up being shot from behind via the bridge, and I'm going to use this rock to stay alive. Mandrake gets some shots on the guy with a carbine, and I'm able to stay alive via this tower. I see that they have a grenade launcher, and this guy, I can see that he pushed into the red building, so I called out to my teammates that they have a nade launcher red building, and we need to stay alive. Do I say do not push into the red building. We do not need to push this guy. Uh, for some reason, my teammate still decides to do that and is going to uh, pay for it with his life by being uh, grenade launchered. Um, now, this guy pushes out. You should realize that when a guy shoots a grenade launcher, it takes a while for that nade launcher to reload. So what you want to do is aggressively, uh, you know, make the most of that and take him out while you can, which is exactly what I end up doing here. And I want to say that I might have skipped the grenade. Oh my goodness, that's a weird thing. Uh, he actually ran out of grenade launcher. Thankfully, I noticed that uh, during the film. Whoa, that was really weird. That's a, that's a kill zone, actually, uh, interfacing with the visual effect of the film there. That's very strange. So I'm pushing using... I'm trying to really use these last two shells of my shotgun 
Uh, I've gotten a kill with every single shotgun round so or shell so far. So I'm trying to play really, really passively into this top red building. I know they don't have a grenade launcher here anymore, but as you can see, uh, enemy players are now pushed out all around me along this snipe hand si side. So I have to play this really, really, really passively. Um, as soon as I left snipe side, they pushed in and kind of overwhelmed us here. So I'm going to try to, you know, use this area as effectively as I can. I'm watching my radar very carefully. A guy comes through this bottom area below me. It's very, that's why I was playing so passively here because I need to watch all my flanks. I'm able to get a pretty easy shotgun shot off on him. And then I notice that this guy is probably going to hear me and probably going to see that his teammate died there. Sure enough, he immediately does and checks through this angle. This is a very good angle to watch from. Uh, with your uh, player here. You can check the stairway and you can check the bottom area there. Uh, so I quickly dip out through the doorway, faking that I'm gonna go back through, but I immediately think that this player to my left who just saw me is gonna nade me. So I fake out here and then immediately push back in and drop down the stairway just so that he's not able to nade me. And as you can hear, he threw a plasma grenade above me, which now explodes. So that was a pretty good play on my part. He also tries to double nade the stairway. So that's what I'm sitting here doing, is I'm letting this player above me nade the stairway, and I'm also watching this back spawn uh, so that enemy players don't push my teammates uh, who are over there in this area. Just trying to catch people off guard, really, during in this back area. Uh, this guy pushes out um, to the snipe side of the map, and I know this guy is still above me and has wasted all his grenades trying to kill me on the stairway. So you can see that this player pushes up here. My teammate runs in and gets the quick Spartan charge on him from behind, and I call out to my teammates that we have red building clear right now. Now what this hopefully means is that all the enemy players are going to be on blue side of the map, which is in general correct, and we have now control of the dock side of the map and sniper. This is important to call out to my teammates. One of the main... Uh, things we need to do here is make sure that they don't get easy uh, cross uh, players crossing over here and getting easy kills on us from this location. You'll see this a little bit later in the film. So I'm pushing up here because I'm trying to cut off the cross line. You can jump on top of this little flower bed here and then jump on top of this little area. You can also use this little angle to stay alive and just really crouch around this area and be super annoying. As long as players don't push out along this bridge or aren't actually, you know, peeking you from this little doorway behind you, you should be okay to push up on this area. That's why I push up on this area so aggressively. Um, some players may not know that they can do that, but because I just saw that my players, you know, my teammates were behind me, I know that I can make that play and uh, stay alive. So I'm able to uh, use this slash shotgun shot effectively, get a shot off on him, uh, I think that this is the ghost, embarrassingly enough, I think that this is the ghost that has respawned. It's not. So I uh, quickly realized my mistake, jumped back, and I'm accidentally able to pick up an SMG, which that guy who I just killed with a shotgun dropped. So we just pick up the sniper rifle and we are able to get away with that. This is the advantage of holding the sniper side of the map is that you can get the sniper and stay alive with it. And if, as long as you're working around your sniper, which is what we're trying to do here, you can get kills back to back as the enemy team tries to push you and hold the enemy team at bay as long as you're working around your sniper effectively. It's crucial not just to have players in these rocks, but also to have players who have pushed up to this location, to have at least one or two people in this red building watching your flank, preferably with an SMG shotgun or grenade launcher. And, you know, several of your teammates can be over here. Hopefully you have a ghost floating around. That's kind of the ideal setup that we like to hold on this map. I'm sure there's other, other setups that you can hold effectively. But that, just to give you an idea of what we're trying to do, I end up getting pretty good SMG shots on this guy. But well, this guy's a really good player. He ends up sticking me. I end up killing him for the rampage, but he quickly ends it with that sticky grenade he just got off. Uh, so right here, I can see that my I'm trying to call out to my teammates here uh, that enemy players may push us along this right-hand side rock wall flank. Uh, this is like a, you can call this out as basically they're pushing us along rock wall uh, or on on our flank basically. 
So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to spot any enemy players pushing us. I see Hog 2 is out there. We're not going to be able to help Hog 2. He's really, Hog 2 is really kind of out of position over there in that area. He needs to be crouching and making very smart decision-making plays, not trying to jump out and, uh, you know, attacking anyone necessarily. So I'm just watching this cross, but I'm going to back up and realize that my teammates ha already have this area under control. So I realize that, hey, my teammates already have this area under control. I need to... Um, fill another angle. You can see we're all over here. I need to fill a different angle. I need to move into a better position. We don't all need to be over over here. So what you're going to see is I'm going to rotate over to this left-hand side, and now you can see all this these huge angles that I'm able to open up for myself here on the right as I see three enemy players trying to charge this long rock wall. So I immediately start aggressively calling these people out to my teammates, getting as many shots onto them as possible. You're gonna see my targeting reticle be really uh, shaky here, left and right. That's because I'm jerking back left and forth, left and right, trying to uh, see as many people as I can, trying to keep track of where everyone is. We get a double kill on those players pushing us. I warn that they may still be trying to push. I try to get as many shots off on here as I can. Admittedly, my shots are a little sloppy due to theater mode, but um, that that's okay. It works out. Uh, Upstart ends up getting some really good shots off on me. Uh, that was I just got really melted there. Um, I sh should have been able to back down, maybe crouch and and thruster pack and stay alive. But I honestly didn't expect him to kill me that fast, which is why I didn't. So we're now up by 10 kills, which is good. Um, I, know, I tell my teammates they're pushing along the right-hand side rock wall, but unfortunately they end up killing uh, most of my teammates over here. And I immediately call out to my teammates. I hear uh, boom. I hear that they have a sniper rifle. And so I immediately thrust her back to the cave. Upstart snipes one of our teammates. And I call out to all my teammates spawning behind us in this docks area. I call out, get out of there, get into the building, they have a sniper. Now I'm sure some teammates die behind me, but my teammate JC immediately recognizes the play I'm trying to make, that they have a sniper over there on the sniper side and that we don't need to give them easy kills. And he pushes immediately in with behind me into this red building area. I'm turning back, trying to get my teammates to follow me. JC immediately does. And I push into the red building with him. Now I'm trying to just get angles off on enemy enemy players, trying to mainly see if we can push into this center area. JC spots the ghost, which is just respawned. Uh, and he's able to get into it, which is a really good play. And I see that my teammate uh, dies beside me on the stairway. I'm able to grenade launcher this area. I don't get any hit markers on this guy. And this guy does a great play, gets a lot of SMG shots on me, and then shoots me in the head. That may look a little laggy for you in the theater film. That's not lag. That player was not lagging at all. He just was really good at the SMG and switching to his BR. That's just a really good play on his part. Uh, so I'm trying to listen to my teammates' callouts off my respawn. I see the grenade launcher was coming up, but I see that we respawn blue. So I'm trying to decide what I want to do here. I'm a little bit shaky. I don't know what play I want to make. So I decide eventually that I want to end up going through the grenade launcher. I think maybe we should have been able to make this play a little bit faster. Now, something I'd like to point out to you is that my teammate here, uh, what he needed to kind of do is he needed to try to sprint out here and try to grab the grenade launcher and then thruster pack back with it. So sprint out here, slide along this little window, okay? So slide along this little area, grab the grenade launcher and then thruster pack straight back with it. Unfortunately, we end up stalemating here and I thought that he was gonna push out, grab the grenade launcher. I know that there's players watching this, but if he had pushed it back, he would have been able to, if he had even died with a grenade launcher, he would have thrown it back far enough for me to grab it. Um, when you're trying to make a play like this for the grenade launcher, it's crucial to make these plays really, really fast. Um, that's why we kind of end up getting stalemated here and not able to do anything. Uh, my teammate ends up pushing out. They grab the grenade launcher before we do, which is exactly what's going to happen. If you stalemate there long enough, they're just going to push up, grab the grenade launcher, and kill you. Uh, so... It's crucial that you kind of make that play, grab the grenade launcher and pull out. We don't want to push that tunnel. Uh, so I call out to my teammates, guys, we don't need to be pushing them. Uh, we have the lead. We we have the lead right now. There's no need to be pushing them. So I'm trying to go into this base. My teammate spots a guy behind me and able to clean up that kill. We're now four kills ahead of the enemy team. 
and I just call out to all my teammates, guys, slow it down. They're all on snipe side. We just spawn blue, okay? We don't need to be forcing any sort of tunnel push. They're mainly on snipe side. Let's start collapsing on them as they're trying to pick up the sniper rifle. Let's start hounding them as they try to pick up the snipe. Just play it slow. Don't peek out. Don't try to charge anybody. We're, we're in the lead. Just let them make the mistakes. And that's exactly what, what we end up doing here, as I'm going to leave the outline mode on for the remainder of the film. My teammates start pushing up here. We start trying to coordinate and make a push on the enemy uh, team here on snipe side. Again, not giving any way any rash or unnecessary deaths. Backing down when we need to. We end up getting another kill. And while they do end up getting the snipe, we're, we're able to pick off multiple players at the same time here. Uh, one kill remaining. And we're able to pick off the final kill here shortly. And we end up beating the enemy team 100 to 96. I ended up getting uh, 20 kills and 5 deaths. But the fact that I got a rampage and I was playing around my teammates and, you know, performed very well against a team that's very obviously very good and we were actually able to pull out the win with some good pushes and with some good teamwork around the map i thought it was a good film to show you guys uh hopefully you guys were able to learn something from this if you were uh please leave a like it helps other people find content like this uh subscribe if you want to see more videos like this in the future and uh if you had any questions about this film just let me know in the comment section down below I'll see you guys in the next capture, or whatever I end up recording. Peace.